Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my first Facebook Live today. Sorry, I'm really nervous. Today, I wanted to try to uh, teach these water ocean seascapes. They're a lot easier than they look. I've done them a couple different ways. And today I have figured out the easiest way to create it. Oh, hi, Christina. Hi, Jeannie. I'm so nervous. Thank you for joining me. I hope this goes well. So what we're going to do is I'm going to try to take a mix of these two seascapes and create one. So um, like I did here, this is what I did this morning which was the easiest way to not only create the sea foam, but create the waves also. So you're gonna start, I'll have to zoom in for you. Hi, Danette. This is just a piece of Stampin' Up! watercolor paper. And I've cut, this one is uh, three and three quarter by five, because I like to map my images, especially if I'm going to do black uh, foregrounds of any type. Hi, Sandy. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with our watercolor paper. I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you if I can figure out where I do that. Um, let me know if the sound is okay and the picture's okay. It's a new camera so that I could try to learn to do Facebook Live. <laughs> Hi, Linda. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to start with our watercolor paper. And then what I got, <coughs> pardon me, was just some masking tape. And I get the green one because this is a painter's mask that won't rip your paper. Especially, thank you for the update on my sound and picture, Janine. Okay, so this won't rip your paper. So that's why I like to use it. So I'm going to cut a piece that's going to go all the way across. And this is going to work twofold. So I usually line it up on a couple of the lines here. And what I want to do is I want to create my mask of my ocean horizon first. So I just pick a line and then go straight across. And so that area is going to be my sky. And I didn't even get it straight. So that was the other idea of having. So then what we're going to do is I'm going to use watercolor pencils. I found to be the easiest. I have done this where you can actually use your aqua painter and your um, ink pads if you want. So you just would put ink in the lid of your pad and use it like watercolor. The only drawback to doing that is that you don't have as much give of moving the colors around. <clears throat> Pardon me. So I found that just using the regular water pencils works. So I'm using all of the blues, which is Night of Navy, Coastal Cabana, Balmy Blue, Pacific Point. I'm also using some browns, which will be the sand. I'm going to use the Cajun Craze, a little bit of crushed curry, and the early espresso. I brought in the yellow, too, because I kind of like having a little bit of yellow accent in here, and you'll see how that makes sense when you go to watercolor. I did bring in a cup of, a little tiny glass of water, because um, you find your, your water will run out in this sometimes. And then just bring your, or always have a paper towel. And I just fold it. And that's just to get excess water off your brush or off your project. So we're going to start with the ocean. And I'm going to take my darkest blue because you're going to want your horizon of your water is going to be the darkest. And you're going to add in some colors. And then as you come down here to the sand, you can add your uh, lighter blues and your greens 
and a little bit of the yellows, which will make it look like it's in the sand. So that we know where our sand is, I'm just going to use my Cajun craze because your darkest brown is going to go right around the edges of your foam, your water foam. So all I'm going to do is determine where I kind of want my sand to go. And I'm just going to lightly sketch across and create my sand line. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a few more little dark areas here. Because you'll see when you use watercolor pencils, you're going to go from the light to the darkest. And there's no rhyme or reason how you do it. So I'll take a little bit of early espresso. That was my Cajun craze. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of early espresso, tap it in here. Sorry, I got my blues all mixed in there. And now this one is my crushed curry. So I want to add a little bit of crushed curry in here. To add the yellows in my sand. And it's perfectly fine to go up into your other colors. Because it's all going to blend up. Pull some yellows in, er, into there. And I'm going to draw in a little bit more Cajun craze into my sand. Now later you'll be doing some accents to it after you've done your basic colors. So I'm going to go ahead and color my sand and then while that's drying, I can work on my ocean. So we're just going to take our aqua painter and normally your aqua painters have different sizes of brush tips. I find I like using the larger brush tip, but it's kind of whatever you prefer. So I'm just trying to make sure this one's clean. I'm just dipping it in my water and making sure it's clean. So I'm going to dip it in there. And so where, wherever you start your water, is going to be your lightest areas and of course the more water you add the lighter it'll get so I'm kind of just gonna start on it I'm gonna try to keep it a little bit wet and draw my color draw my water up blending as I go you see as you move up it's gonna draw to the darker just blend it in. See, I could have even added more uh, colored pencil to this. But it's okay because if you find that you've gone too light on your adding your pencil, you can always go back after it dries a little and add more color to it. You don't want to over blend it with your water because it will just pick it up. Get a little dark there. I'm just going to blend it in a little bit. And then while that's drying, I'll clean my brush a little and let it set here. And we're going to go to our blues. I did bring in a little Coastal Cabana for when we get a little lower down here. So I'm going to take my darkest blue, which is my Night of Navy, which is going to be the horizon colors. So you just color it in along your tape there. Oh, I guess I needed to sharpen that. And you want to add a few little dark in here because remember it's all going to blend a 
Now I'm going to go to my next darkest blue, which is Pacific Point, and I'm going to pull some of that in there too, just to give it a little extra up there by the dark. Now I know I kind of want my waves, a few of them, a little farther up, so I'll try not to color all of my white, but you'll be able to add white where your waves are going to be. Now I'm going to take my lightest blue, which is the balmy blue, add in there. So now I know my wave, I want one wave here. So I'm just kind of giving myself a guide of where I want some waves. I have a little one over here. That's kind of just giving you an outline. And your waves are always going to come off. I'm going to put another little one right there. I'm going to draw a little bit of my sand up into my wave here. And I want to use crushed curry, which is yellowish. I'm just going to add a little bit of that in there. For the sea foam is going to be landing on the sand. Oh, wrong one. Looking for my balmy blue. They kind of look the same when you look at the tips of the pencils. Okay. So now this one. Oops. I dropped my paper towel. Sorry. Okay. This one I want to start at the top a little bit because I'm going to want that to dry. So I just go along my tape there and tap off my brush a little bit. I'm trying not to go way into where I wanted to have my Hi, Mary from Liberty, Missouri. Are you guys getting a ton of snow like we are? Actually, I'm kind of loving it. It just means craft day all day. So around your waves, you're going to have a little bit of darker shadow underneath. And as it dries, you'll see it'll leave some white marks for you which we will highlight with a white marker. Now I want to draw some of this blue down into my yellow sand. I've done this so many different ways in the last few days because I really wanted to try to learn how to do this well, whether or not I'm doing it right not really positive but it worked so the lighter you want it the more water it's going to add you the more water you have on your brush and then just kind of blend it okay so i noticed i need a little more blue there so I found a trick. I'm going to take my balmy blue and I'm simply going to take my tip of my water marker onto my pen and then I'm going to draw in a little bit of blue. Now this will be really concentrated so when you do it you can
That way it gives you a little bit of that green look when you see an ocean and it's coming up on the beach. It's kind of got that green tint to it. So I'm still using my balmy blue just to add some little accents in here. And then I'm going to let this dry a little bit before I start adding more detail because the more water you add, the more it'll, um, uh, what would the term be? I guess it would be muddy. It, it'll make it muddy. Been there, done that. You should see my trash can. I have a lot of that. So right now I'm just going to try to add a couple accents around where I want my little waves to be. Okay, so while that's drying, clean my brush. And then I'm going to go back into my sand. Let's see if I can find the right brown here. I'm going to use my Cajun Craze. I always start lighter. It, if you're afraid that you're going to go too dark, go lighter. So I'm just going to drag a little bit of Cajun Craze in here. And the fun thing about watercolor, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like an abstract art. So you really can't go wrong. Just have fun with it. I know my phone's going to be down here, so I add a little more highlight there. Okay, so we've pretty much got our sand. <clears throat> you can also, when you do the sand, I won't go into great detail on it, but you can take your pencil and actually flick your water down onto it and it'll create like the little sand spots. So anyway, you could go forever into detail in this. Um, uh, some of these, it took me a while to create. This one was my fastest one this morning. So, so now you can, if you want, speed up the drying just a little bit with um, a heat tool. I wouldn't do it too much. I mean, it kind of warps it a little bit, but I am going to hit it just a little bit with the heat tool so I can speed up the process for you and add a little detail. And I have no idea how to mute the mic, so you gotta, you got to hear my heat tool. It doesn't take much because we're not we're not dousing our paper really wet because we're using the aqua painter so it's not super wet and it's like most uh, watercoloring I find is like most mixed media uh, you just can keep la layering I have a little bit of coastal cabana here so I wanted to uh, add just a little more turquoise in here. Trying to get my pen a little bit wet there. So I'm just going to add some highlight. And the more water you use, the more muted it's going to be. I have to look at my pencils. I don't know, I don't know the colors by it. So let's add this. Let's bring a little bit of Pacific Point down in here and get some more. <coughs> I'm 
going to touch up my horizon a little darker. Because before you start the sky on these, you do your horizon does have to be dry. So what we'll do is work on the the sand here next. Okay, under my waves, this is my darkest night of navy. So when you barely touch your brush, you have your just kind of make lines. Kind of like, you know, how the wave has. Yeah, I found I have more control if I touch my marker to my pencil for more detailed control. You could just create right the way you did in the beginning by just coloring on the paper and going with it. As you see, this isn't a fast process, but it's fun. Oops, sorry, throw stuff at you. Okay, so why the bottom's drying, I'm gonna pick up my tape. And you know, since this is live video, my tape will probably... Hi from Texas. Whoa. Where are you at in Texas, Jeanette? I have a daughter that lives in Dallas. Oh, see, it did tear it a little. But that's okay, because I'm going to put something there. Okay, so what I'm going to do here... Is if I didn't recrumple my paper... Is I'm going to remask lightly my horizon and it's okay if there's a tiny little line because that'll give you a chance to make it straight now on this one where is it i'm just going to use balmy blue because i don't want the sky as dark as the ocean and you're going to have clouds so kind of leave yourself a few little white spots for clouds I mean, I've seen where people kind of draw it all in and do all that, which which I did when I first tried this, but it's really not necessary. I'm going to come along my horizon here. And I'm going to add just a little bit of... Pacific Point, just to add some depth. And your darkers are usually always at the top. And you may have a little bit darker around your clouds. You can, you can go in great depth, like where I just have clouds on here. You can take a gray and kind of highlight a little bit more make gray clouds you could go forever with this stuff but i just kind of want some wispy clouds okay make sure my container's wet And then so your lightest to your darkest to start here on the horizon. And if you're still kind of damp down here, you don't want your horizon too terribly wet because it will it will bleed into your ocean, which isn't a big deal because your ocean's the darkest there at the top. 
All you want to do is blend and spread your colors a little bit. And then as you pull into your white spots, it just gives it the light blue. Kind of messed up that cloud there, didn't I? Pull a little bit of balmy blue. Bur Burleson, Texas. I have absolutely no idea where that is. Yes, I'm doing live, so I'm forgetting to read your comments. I apologize if, if somebody asked something and I didn't hear it or pay attention. The other way to create your clouds, if you don't draw them that way, is actually while you're, when you blend your entire sky, just take a napkin or a towel and create your clouds. Works the same way. That's kind of what I did here. I had it wet and then just dabbed on it. And it creates its own kind of different colors of clouds. Let's see, I'm leaving that wet so that I don't, overwork it lightly pull up my tape and i taped it when it was still a little wet so but that's okay we can fix it that's what we do we're stampers we fix our food paws and all i'm going to do is take my pacific point and touch up my, touch up my horizon a little bit I think the very first one I did, I posted a picture and uh, <laughs> I realized my horizon was crooked, but nobody said anything. Hey, Miss Tina. Hi, Cindy. Are you proud of me? I'm, I'm trying to do a Facebook Live. <laughs> I'm so nervous. I can't stand it. So now I want to add just a little bit of highlight around my waves again. Light, your waves are kind of going to always carry off a little bit. So this now is my uh, Night of Native which is the darker that's going to be right at the base of my. And you'll see this will make sense when I start to do in the white. Right at the curves. Okay, I'm going to hit this with the heat tool for a second. Heat tool also helps flatten it, flatten it back out. And you see the, the colors actually change just a little bit as it dries. And you could go into a lot more depth on this ocean, but I'm going to show you how we do the actual waves and the sea foam. So all this is is the Stampin' um, chalk marker. I just totally lost my thought. 
So just take the tip of your marker and just bounce it a little bit. I should have dragged, you know what I'm going to do because of the way it's coming across. I'm going to take just, there's my balmy blue. I'm going to take a hint of balmy blue on a brush and I don't want those quite quite as bold. You'll see why. There we go. And just tap it off. So why those are drying, we'll go down to our seafoam. So here we have our seafoam. And you just dot it. And as it dries, it blends in. Gives you that. You don't want to cover too much of your little dark brown, though. Because you'll have to go over this a couple times with your chalk marker to get it to really show up. It may not be showing up as well for me right now because the paper is still a little wet. you're just creating bubbles Let's see if our waves done I'll show you how we do the wave okay so let's pick a wave and we're just going to dot on it because you know the waves kind of have foam there So this isn't a quick technique, really. I mean, but I'm really starting to get into uh, stampscapes and things like that. Kind of like I, I uh, did a uh, stamping on photos, too. So it kind of reminds me of that. And bring in a few light waves in the back. I think my chalk marker's worn out. I've been using it for two days. <laughs> See, as you go over it, it gets a little more brilliant. Oh, look at all the hearts. You guys are really so sweet. So sweet. So when you're doing that, you still want to leave a little bit of your dark brown there. You can always go back in and highlight, but it's it gives it it gives it the shadow. So I don't know if you can see that. So when you sit and you dot it, it just gives it the the right shadow. So you get the gist of that. Then I'm going to show you how to highlight these waves so they're really brilliant. So you're going to take your darkest night of navy. And for this one, I I dropped my water pen. Um, for this one, use your um, finest tip um, water marker. Um, Aqua painter. Oops. 
sorry, I'm flustered. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this because we want it kind of concentrated. And you're just going to kind of dab. And it's okay. See how it's flared out just a little bit? That's perfectly fine because then it makes it more realistic. And just by going into the white just a little bit, it makes your wave kind of pop. So you're basically just doing a lot of highlighting. And then I want the top of that wave to highlight. So I'm just going to do a real fine line right across the top. My pencil's about worn out. So when you drag your wave down a little bit, I'm just adding some darker highlights in here. So you just keep working it until you get the desired image that you are trying to accomplish. And you'll see the more you add highlights, the more defined the whole scape will get. I keep dipping my, what I'm doing over there is I'm dipping this in my water because I'm too lazy to squeeze it, I guess. But uh, actually the truth is I was doing this earlier and I squeezed one too hard and I blew the whole lid off and ruined the whole project, but welcome to my world. I'm going to add a little more dark highlight in here. See, I just did it. I squeezed it and water came out everywhere. These are old. I have so many aqua painters because I use them for when I'm just coloring with my ink pads and stuff. Okay, we're going to draw in a little bit more. Um, my balmy blue again. Balmy blue into our green here real quick. Okay. And that gives our waves have dried so now you can go back with the more detailed dots in your waves to make them pop when you layer the chalk marker it just gets wider the only reason i did learn not to use a um what do you call them gel pen is because if you use a gel pen on something like this I found, because this one I did use gel pen, you can see it's a little more vibrant whites and streaks and things, which looks great until you try to stamp on it. And even Memento or Stays On won't cover it. So you have to take a marker and go over it. I mean, I guess it's not a really big deal, but it just seemed like a little extra step to me. I'm going to add some more sea foam here. I think my chalk marker is running out. Oh, darn. I'm going to have to make a stamping order. Ah! 
but I want a little more vibrant white right here on this wave here. Okay, there you go. Basically, you guys, there is the basics of a seascape. And on my clouds where they um, came out a little bit extreme. Oh, see, I did it again. Um, take, take your um, balmy blue and give your clouds some highlights underneath and above like a normal cloud would do you can even do that with grays um, take your um, basic gray uh, stamp hat am I naming it wrong is it smoky smoky slate and just add a little gray to your clouds You know how it's, it's never really clear skies when you're at the beach. It's kind of this cast the overs. Okay. So then if you wanted to do something like this, all I did is I used, wait until this is dried completely before you start to stamp on it. I took the home to roost and I put, I stamped, this several times use your stamparatus um so that you can re-stamp to get a nice dark image for the mountain here simple take a yellow sticky and all you're gonna do is see that's your mountain you take that and you would lay it on your sheet mask off your ocean and then just take a black marker which let's see if I have one handy I can grab Take your black marker, make your mountain. Look at that, you have a mountain. Mountain, that's what my friend says. She can't, she can't seem to say mountain. You know what, I want another little tiny mountain right next to it. So I'm going to keep my same mask. There you go. Fill it in. And then for, um, and then I'll close it up because I know you guys are. For my birds, I used high tide. But the difference was when I stamped it, I stamped my larger birds. I just kind of masked off three of them, stamped those, then stamped the smaller ones. Again, I would suggest using your stamparatus because you are on watercolor paper, which is coarse. So stamping an image is a little difficult. For the seashell here, it's this bite of bay. Isn't this beautiful? I'm working on right now and hopefully I can show you uh, eventually when I create it. I'm doing a seascape using this with the ocean off to the side. All I did is stamp my shell. And I did, when I stamped the shell, I did, I used my marker to do the shell in black. And then I used my like early espresso on the sand part of it, you know, a uh, marker to stamp and, and then just colored it in. And then you can take your marker and add little dots if you want or do the flick. There you go, people. Easy oceanscape. Um, I really hope you liked it. And thank you for being so patient with me with my very very first facebook live official and 
And I'm only to you guys in Team Stamp It because I think you guys are wonderful and you put up with me. So there you go. Oceanscapes.